Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And this time, I'm using this. <laughs> it's a piece of black card, and I cut a uh, rectangle out of it. And what I do is I hold that up to my canvas to get the canvas size. And then I hold that up to what I'm painting. And then I use this square to work out the scale of everything. Now I have to say this is not perfect science <laughs> and uh, but it will get you closer well I find it does anyway, it gets me closer to uh, doing a sketch of what I've got in front of me um, onto the canvas a bit quicker than say using a ruler or using a um, a um, what's it called a scaling tool. So I've been using this square. <laughs> and it's amazing, I mean how well it works. And it's a good way of working out your composition as well. Like if you was out painting out and about, you can hold your little black rectangle up at something and think, oh, where do I want this house to be situated in my painting? And then uh, you can just hold that up and then work it out. And then you can fire away. So I'm using a thin burnt umber wash really to start this I'm using a water mix water mixable oil so uh, I just mix it with a little bit of water which thins the paint and then when that the water dries it just leaves a very small amount of pigment which is stain the canvas basically get that coconut shape, a nice roundish <laughs> shape. I actually opened this coconut with a hammer and a screwdriver. Um, I tried following a tutorial actually <laughs> on opening coconuts and uh, it was a lot harder than I thought because on the tutorial, this person just whacked it with a hammer a few times and it just opened perfectly. When I did that, it didn't open perfectly. In fact, it was more like a coconut massacre. <laughs> but it was open, so that's all right. Got some bananas in there as well. I, I was thinking of like a tropical selection of items with the coconut, the kiwi, the bananas, and then to add a bit more color because I wanted a bit more, I put a few grapes in there as well. So that's what we're trying to get on our canvas. The photo is very similar to the uh, angle that I was looking. It's not quite the same, but it gives you an idea of what I was painting. And then it also gives you a reference picture if you wanted to paint this as well. You could just go to the very beginning of this video and pause it. And you can use that. Or you can take a screenshot of it print it out and you can use it for that as well. It is good fun painting still life. Um, I am enjoying it. Uh, it's it's a real challenge. Each time is challenging for me. It's, it's, hard. it's hard work, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to improve your craft. 
You're always going to make mistakes. I'm not a camera. I can't get it perfect, but I can try to get it as close as I can so it looks good. <laughs> so I can look at it and go, well, that looks like a coconut. That looks like kiwi. They look like bananas and they look like grapes. And it's interesting. I actually really like this painting when it when I finished it um got everything that I wanted in it. There's one that what I wanted is to try and make it I don't want to labour over it, I wanted it to be loose. And I wanted it to look uh, alive. <laughs> Which is a I'm always trying to create like this movement in the paint. I'm always thinking about that. But some of my favourite painters uh, are able to do that, and I'm always trying to make it look like that, look like the painting's alive. I'm starting to believe that it's a matter of putting your brush strokes down and then that's it and leaving it and then using your brush strokes wisely as well <laughs> it's not easy painting is it it's so complicated unfortunately I don't have a master teacher or anything like that <laughs> I'm sure uh, painters of the past I mean they were involved in groups. Not all of them I suppose. Some would go on their own in pain. But a lot of them were in big big groups, big uh, big businesses really. You have the master and the apprentices. <laughs> So I keep sitting back and looking at the, <laughs> using my little trick there, I uh, paint in the air and then paint on the canvas. <laughs> I started that um, a while ago, I remember doing it at school, but I find it really useful to paint, to sort of do that. I did. When I was life drawing, I would do that. I would draw the shape of the body and then I would draw it on my paper. So I'd draw in the air and then draw on my paper. And try and get that memory of the shape. So I'm seeing if everything's in the right place. About, anyway. <laughs> I just said, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I find it's quite important to uh, spend time on this first part um, because I've tried to skip this first part at times and then what happens is <laughs> I've skipped it I, uh, I tend to have to work harder when I paint because I've got to fix stuff so what I'm trying to do is being a little bit strict with myself in getting that first sketch about right. Sometimes I sit at my easel and I think, ah, I'm awesome. I don't even need a sketch. But <laughs> I'm always a little bit delusional when I sit there like that. Because <laughs> I always think halfway through, I think, you know, if I'd have done a sketch, a quick sketch, I would have had this painting done a lot quicker and I've done probably would have done it a bit better as well I wouldn't have had to struggle a bit <laughs> but sometimes you just get really confident so this is my favorite part the painting <laughs>
So we've got a nice mixture of uh, brown there, burnt sienna, burnt umber. I'm just blocking it and just blocking the colour in. I'll put a bit more dark in there to get that area of the coconut. So uh, sometimes I throw a bit of black in with my burnt umber and that actually creates the mixture that they use. Well it's starting to rain really hard here. <laughs> Yeah, Van Dyke Brown is made using ivory black and burnt umber. So sometimes I throw a bit of ivory black in my burnt umber to make it darker. Original Van Dyke Brown was a uh, an actual pigment that is no longer used. I think it fades quite quickly. It's quite a few pigments <laughs> artists used to use that we, we don't use anymore. One of uh, the favourite yellows, chrome yellow, no longer used because of its poisonousness. <laughs> So I'm getting some white, some yellow ochre in there, in burnt sienna, a bit of this medium, which is an impasto medium, but you, you can use um, a bit of chalk or something, finely ground up stone in your paint, <laughs> that thickens it up. You can use beeswax, I've done that before. I made a painting really thick with beeswax. <laughs> I was uh, learning from uh, Turner, looking at Turner's paintings and learning his technique and things. So I got this really good book on uh, on Turner actually, on his watercolour techniques. So I'm just doing the lighter part. Just squint your eyes, look at what you're painting, and then uh, look for these lighter areas, and then just paint them in. <laughs> like I said, you you have to try and express with your brush, express the light express the shape drinking big gulps of water at the moment <laughs> So I've got a few different colours on my palette there. <laughs> a little bit of uh, chrome, chromium oxide, that is, that green chromium oxide. And using my brown. Because there's a bit of a, a greeny brown around the kiwi. It's sort of goldish in a way. It's hard to explain what the kiwi skin colour is. <laughs> it's a, it is almost like a gold skin. So I'm mixing. Mix in the colour and then uh, <laughs> realising it's wrong, going right up to it. And don't be afraid to do that. If you're struggling mixing a colour, 
just go right up to it and put your brush right over it. <laughs> I always do that now. And then you can ask yourself, is is the tone right? Have you got the right tone? Is it yellow enough? Is it brown enough? Is it blue enough? Is it red enough? <laughs> I tend to think um, yellow a lot. With this, anyway, I was thinking, is it yellow enough? And a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of green. And then I dulled it to a bit of the burnt umber. Now I'm trying to think of the mass of the kiwi, the, uh, the full round shape of it while I'm painting it and the angle of it for the uh, just really I tend to try and see it and then I try and imagine it so I'm looking at the item then I try and imagine that item in the painting So every time I mix, I check it, I hold it up, question whether it's correct or not. So I added a bit more yellow ochre in my mixture, a little bit of white in there. Like I said, I found the kiwi skin a real challenge to get the mixture right. <laughs> Especially with the way the light was making it sort of sparkle. <laughs> I'm off again. I was like, I can't get it to look my colour to sparkle. But what I wasn't realising is I haven't got enough colour on the canvas yet because that's another thing is when you're uh, mixing your colors when you when you're uh, mixing your colors it, it's the relationship of that color as well with the colors around it that's why a lot of the master painters uh, they would block in a lot of it quick just to get the paint all over the canvas. I say that actually, I don't know exactly how a lot of the masters did it. Because <laughs> they all tended to do it differently. For those golden colours. Sometimes a couple of brush strokes is enough. Gone for a 
little bit lighter. So I have to remember that I've put some paint already on there. So whatever I put on top is going to mix a little bit what's on there. So sometimes when I do my mixture, I go a little bit lighter than I need to. And then when I put the paint on, it'll mix a little bit and then it should work. <laughs> so I used a bit of Naples yellow in my mixture there. So I was reading about a painter that used Naples yellow as the highlight colour a lot uh, because it's either sun yellow and it, and it didn't want to use white. So that's chromium oxide, a bit of cadmium yellow and white. Just checking it. This is the uh, fleshy part of a kiwi. <laughs> Just scrubbing it on. Tends to be the way I paint everything now. I go through a, uh, a scrubbing phase. <laughs> In fact, you could consider the uh, painting the same as washing up. You uh, scrub it and then uh, rinse it <laughs> and then you let it dry. <laughs> so the rinsing is like the uh, just the, the little extra bit of finesse. I'm just wiping that. Sometimes just get a bit of a cloth. Look at the shape and wipe off what you don't want. The good thing about painting uh, wet and wet like this is I can move paint around and uh, I can manipulate it. Where if you was paying in acrylic, then the, then the paint dries because it does dry a bit, and it doesn't move as well as oil paint. I find anyway, you just don't have that kind of control that you have with oils. And uh, if you need to darken a mixture, you can just mix it on the canvas. That's why I like oil painting so much. The uh, painters that aren't as good, like me, <laughs> we can manipulate it a bit so we can bring it back. Hunting for those light areas on the green. Because it has sort of a, because it's wet, it has like a shiny surface. Because I'd only just cut it open when and then placed it there, so the, the nice tasty kiwi juice <laughs> it's on the surface I don't eat kiwis very often but they are really nice I must eat them more <laughs> So I kept sitting back, <laughs> sit back, have a look, look at the shape. Does it look like there's a piece of kiwi like there? 
difficult to try and imagine my piece of kiwi on the painting as well as the one that's there because sometimes you paint something that doesn't have the same shape as what you're looking at so you've got to manipulate it to make it look like it's there <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense massage in your painting <laughs> giving my brush a quick rinse there in water. So you can uh, wipe your brush and mess around a bit while you're thinking. <laughs> when you think of your next move you can uh, mess around like that. So I've got a little bit of blue a little bit of white, a little bit of that red. That's cadmium red deep, that one. Ultramarine blue. And then I can uh, make a sort of a dull, dull colour. A greyish, bluish colour. Holding it up, see if I've got the tone right. Rubbing in the coconut. So when you're uh, scrubbing it in, you don't need that much paint. You don't need to uh, pile it on because you want it to be uh, thin, really. Because when you're putting your highlights on top. You don't want there to be, to be um, there to be too much paint on there for you to uh, have to battle with. <laughs> So I've got some white, some uh, bit of that medium, that impasto medium. So I want really thick paint. <laughs> and matching the colour. A lot of the times your white is white, so not white. <laughs> I usually got something else in them, like a bit of warmth, a bit of coolness. It's funny that white is our coldest colour. Strange, isn't it? I think what it is, is because white is a uh, neutral, it's, um, I 
it's colorless therefore the brain probably can't add warmth to it <laughs> I'm not sure that's where. Right. I think it's something to do with that though. Something to do with the way the brain perceives it. There's just nothingness. So then the brain must think, oh well there's nothingness so it's cold. No life, cold. That's my guess. So I'll load my paint up and then I'm placing it on there. If you pick up any of the brown in your white, just wipe your brush and then load your brush again. Otherwise, you'll end up making uh, um, your colour a bit browner. Add in the, the little highlight bits where the lights hitting that bit of coconut, I'm trying to add that. Pulling the paint around. <laughs> the paint's getting quite thick on there. <laughs> So what I was having problems with was that the uh, white on the coconut didn't look white enough. And I was thinking, well, I think it's the inner part of the coconut that's darker than what I was painting. You see, the tone now has gone very light within the coconut. I was thinking, well, that's not right. <laughs> so I, I knew there was something I needed to do, but whenever I'm in trouble, <laughs> I just start blocking areas in. It's easy, and then I can think about it while I'm doing that. This is another good time to sort out shapes. You use a lot of uh, paint on the uh, the background area, depending on what colour it is. You can uh, blend away some of the colour that you put on. You can do the old back and forth technique. <laughs> bit of the background colour, bit of the object colour, bit of the background colour. Until you get the shape you desire. I was thinking about this portrait that I painted and uh, I didn't do any drawing for it, I just painted it and it worked really well. <laughs> so sometimes maybe you should just go for it. I might do a portrait video actually. 
feel like I could uh, I could do a portrait. I'm trying to keep my videos no longer than an hour and a half because if they go beyond that, it's going to be uh, hard watching. <laughs> So just blocking in the background. Sometimes I use my finger to smooth something off. cleaning the shapes up. So some artists they will tone their canvas to a brown or a red even or any colour and they'll leave that tone underneath showing through so they won't clean up as clean <laughs> as I'm doing on this one. They will uh, allow it to come through the painting for the overall effect. A lot of landscape painters would use a uh, pinky red as their uh, background and then they will allow a bit of that. Sometimes it's a good idea to experiment with different toned canvases. You could even paint in like acrylic or gouache on different coloured cards and see what effects you get. So I got a bit of dark colour there and I went for that rim of the coconut. Squinting my eyes down looking for dark parts of the coconut. I like that brush, a little flat brush. When I can't find that brush, it's a sad time. <laughs> I'm darkening things again. You know what I said about you can mix your colour on the canvas just like it's your palette. You can, you can do that. Imagine that the canvas now is like a palette. <laughs> if I need to darken it to show light then I can just throw the colour in and mix it on there. Now I went through a quite a cool colour in the centre of the coconut so I wanted it to look um, cool. That was just a personal choice. Um, I think the real colour was a bit warmer than that but I felt like it, I wanted it to be cool. That's another thing about being a painter, you can make decisions uh, for yourself. <laughs> you can use brush strokes you want to use, you can use colours you want to use, and the painting will come out as your own, not somebody else's. Because all those choices, all the, the paints you use, the brushes you use, the strokes you use, the subjects you use, it all creates your style. That's who you are as a painter. looking at the way the texture of the coconut was and I wanted to try and rough mine up a bit. <laughs> and then a few of the hairs sort of stick out.
It's a funny thing is an artist's style. I never really thought about an artist's style for a while. I just painted. And what I didn't realise was people were desperate to find their style. And then when I heard about that, I was desperate to find my style. <laughs> and then you realise that there is a unique style of your own waiting to be found. It's just a matter of doing art and your style is there. It is just the way you paint or the way you draw, that is your style. That's the natural style anyway. Painting a grape. <laughs> so I went for a bit of red, a little bit of blue and a little bit of black to make the dark darkness of the grape. things up a bit there. It's funny, when I was uh, looking at this painting once in uh, a gallery not that far from me, um, and I went up close to it and I saw this like line, there was like a window and a woman at the window and I was like why is there this funny line there? And I was like, oh, the artist has just cleaned up an area and just got the brush and gone. <laughs> but when you stand back, you don't see it, you don't notice it. Everything looked really smooth and perfect. And then when I went up close, I was like, well, that line's a bit weird. Because everything else was rendered to perfection. <laughs> it was absolutely perfect. Except those lines, there was like a line along the window and around the person there was a bit of a mark. It was a Victorian painting. Really good though. So I went into a little bit of cadmium yellow and a bit of uh, cadmium red and uh, paint the translucent bit of the grape and then add a bit of light on the grape. You don't actually notice it that well when you see it on here, but in in real life when you look at the painting you can see that hint of yellowy red on the grape. It just makes it translucent looking. <laughs> Picking up some black to put in the seeds on the kiwi. Just stray ivory black. I messed up a few there. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Let's have to get some of that green back. Some more light back. It's 
funny when you're uh, when you're working on your painting and you're working as hard as you can. It's amazing how you can make simple mistakes and not notice. <laughs> That's why it's always a good idea to have a break from your painting and then go back to it and then you can tend to fix stuff that you couldn't fix before. You just needed a bit more time to uh, think about it or you needed fresh eyes to look at it. Some people use a mirror and look at the paint, their own painting through the mirror to see mistakes and some people take a photograph on their phone and look at it. That's a quick way of checking. Some people turn their picture upside down. Just wiping my finger. See, what I'm trying to do here is paint that kiwi that's there. <laughs> I'm trying to make that one look right. Carrying on blocking in the uh, bottom part. I've got the painting on the wall so I can glance at it <laughs> to see uh, how it ended, finished. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen this uh, video of me painting it. <laughs> It's amazing actually, you do learn from watching yourself paint. You start learning bits, you think, oh, I could do that better. <laughs> scrubbing away the paint, scrubbing away. So scrub this grey in, greyish colour in, and then I can come back and uh, and go for it with the light. I remember when I painted an apple once and I chopped it in half and uh, painted it. I was amazed at how three-dimensional it looked. 
I think that was the first time that I painted something that looked three-dimensional. And I was like, whoa. And I, I actually painted it again on a, uh, a fruit bowl for somebody. <laughs> It's amazing really, you do a lot of work on your palette when you're painting. You probably do more work on your palette than you do on the painting. <laughs> All I was doing is remixing the Kiwi colour. I just wanted it a bit darker. So it was just burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. to myself um, that'll be it we'll move on start work on the uh, banana mixing the banana colour bit of alizarin and crimson in there into the white you can see all those mixes that I've done <laughs> just checking it in the colour. It's quite a greyish It's always uh, surprising the colour of things when you're really checking it. Because when you first start painting you, you for some reason you just make everything really bright and strong of the colour you think it is like you do grass with pure green out of a tube <laughs> you do a bright blue sky pure white clouds <laughs> that's what I used to do might be just me so I mixed my colour and I thought oh, this isn't working so I go right up to the banana, mix it on the palette, and check it. Throwing in a bit more yellow, and then I'll throw in a little bit of red, and then if it needs cooling down, I'll put in a little bit of blue. Because your blue and red is your purple, so and purple dulls yellow. Just think of the opposites on the colour wheel. The opposite colour can dull the other colour. <laughs> it's 
to once I got a colour that I thought well that's about right <laughs> I just use it So I'm doing the same system again, I'm blocking in the uh, base colour really. So I'm just blocking it in, getting the uh, my dull yellow in there. Just massing in the whole shape. <laughs> So actually massing in, you could do that with a group of people, you could uh, mass in the whole shape and then come back with your brighter colours and bring the people out of the mass of people. <laughs> It's not perfect, but is it going to look like two bananas? Because <laughs> that's the challenge, isn't it? So my uh, brighter yellow is cadmium yellow white. And then uh, I go and have a look. Do I need a bit of crimson in it to make it a bit warmer? Or do I need to cool it down with more white? That was my challenge. <laughs> so I didn't want my yellow to be too bright yellow because the banana isn't actually a bright yellow. <laughs> So I've got some white there into my yellow mixture. There's a bit of uh, yellow ochre, there's a bit of cad yellow, there's even a bit of Naples yellow in there, and white, and there's even a bit of crimson. And it's mixed and it's got some of the impasto medium in it. And if you hold the brush lightly and just let the paint drag off, you can release more paint. Try and get that shape of the banana that like, bends upwards a bit. So I thought painting two bananas was tough. Can you imagine painting a hand? <laughs> I painted a few hands and they are 
I'm just building it up. <laughs> I always sit back though, always sitting back having a look. Always sit back, have a look, squint your eyes. Got a bit of a darker colour there, just to create that separation between the bananas. It was actually uh, a little bit of red in with the brown. Bit of that ground colour there, <laughs> just throwing it in. I threw in a little bit of brown and blue and white to make my mixture to get rid of that yellow. See, the more paint you've got on <laughs> on your brush, the the more it's going to turn to that colour, and it'll dilute what you want to get rid of, which is what I did there. Just got rid of it. And therefore, I'll stop blocking this background in. So it's a good it's a good feeling when you start blocking the background in and when you start seeing things coming forward and you think, oh this is starting to look alright. <laughs> Still, <laughs> just getting that background covered.
So I decided that my dark part of the banana needs to be a bit warmer because my colour was a little bit greyish and uh, I wanted to improve it <laughs> so I warmed it up a little bit thinking about the cast shadow from the kiwi <laughs> Trying to get a bit of dark to separate that banana from that banana. <laughs> Just repainting that bit. <laughs> Just scraping away paint that it didn't quite look right to me, so I got rid of it. using uh, brush strokes to create the movement that I was saying. Molding it really. A bit like using clay. You're molding it around.
thinking there might be a bit of cast shadow from that coconut because things have moved a bit in my painting to uh, what it looked like in real life so I've got to imagine things a bit about the shadow now. You have to imagine the the items on material cast in the shadow, thinking about that shadow and choosing what colour you want. As your shadow. Do you want the shadow to be warm? Does it need a bit of cadmium red in it? Do you want it to be cooler? So the one thing that I tend to not do, which I'm always trying to tell myself, is they make the shadows darker because when you look at them, they are quite dark. <laughs> and I do have a tendency to not darken them enough. So I'm always telling myself to make sure that the shadows are dark. I picked up a bit more colour. I'm putting the grapes in. So I've got some blue, some red, and some black. couple of grapes there, a little bit of the uh, stalk
more in a bit more red into the mixture. Putting the uh, light on there. As the stalk, <laughs> a little bit of brown in there. Bit of the uh, yellow and red in the other side of the grape to give it that translucent look. I say, uh, yeah, you can see it better on that grape now. <laughs> bit too much, just mixed it a bit. You can be really subtle with that though, you can just have that hint. in this painting background part in blocking it in got that dark strip along the top in the dark background there. short rests, <laughs> rest my arm up a bit and then uh, start scrubbing again. When your shoulder gets a bit warm, <laughs> you just relax.
making sure there's a separation there. <laughs> So I plan on doing a few other paintings and a few different types. So if you enjoy these episodes, don't forget to subscribe and like and if you know someone who would enjoy them, maybe share them. it makes you feel inspired to paint and that's good because that means I've done my job <laughs> that's what I want to do I want to inspire people to be able to paint to, to watch something like this and go oh wow I can see the process I think I could do that <laughs> and then it's good isn't it and you could do it and you could do it better so I'm getting some white and uh, I'm gonna start putting in the material in the background see I enjoy doing this but <laughs> it gives, uh, gives things life I like using brush strokes to do things. And load I like loading the brush, loading it up and just getting the paint on there. You spend quite a while being quite strict and and then you can just let loose. <laughs> Finding that balance to be loose and accurate. That's my aim. That's what I'm aiming for. seem to be making lots of funny noises with my mouth while I'm painting. <laughs> Do little beatboxing and all sorts. Didn't realise that I did that. I think it's because I'm uh, feeling a little bit relieved and happy that I can do this bit. So I was looking forward to doing this bit all the way through. <laughs> So I just look at the material and pick out bits that I think I can use that's important.
I don't need to do every little detail of the material. I just want to take what I need. So I'm going to have a go at doing some more landscapes as well. Do some more with water. Getting the feeling of more seascapes. I need to uh, get out there with my paints as well. Get out there. And I did uh, the other day, I went out and painted my washing. <laughs> set my video camera up, I'm not sure if the video worked because it did get dark pretty quick. We'll see. Well that's what I'm doing myself at the moment. Trying to do more. cleaned up a little bit but the things I like about this painting I really like the colours I think the colours work really well um, and I, I like the looseness of it it still looks fresh when I've, I've got it on the wall it looks fresh and uh, it's one of my favourite ones that I've painted I enjoyed painting it and uh, I like the painting as well. <laughs> it's one of those ones that works and you think, oh, I'm so glad I did that. See, I'm mixing colour there. <laughs> I put a bit of blue on and then put a bit of red on to make my purpley colour for my shadow. And then I sit back, have a look, think about what I could do that won't mess the painting up but will improve it slightly. <laughs> I was like, well, I could do with a bit of a the top part of the, the bananas the dark I was adding bits of green in there. It's the top part of the banana, there is some green. So I wanted to get that in. Let's 
sitting back having a look. I want the dark line around that part of the banana. Just felt it needed to uh, stand out a bit more. So there we go, there's the uh, finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like I said, I've got a lot of plans for more videos. And uh, thanks very much for watching this one. Uh, if you're going to paint this, good luck. Enjoy yourself. Take your time. You don't have to do it in an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, you, you can spend all day on paintings. In fact, you can spend weeks, years on paintings. So thanks very much for watching this one, and I'll see you in another one. Cheers, bye.